plantations in the south are nothing unique. Unless it's this one. The last of its kind in North America. The nearest tea that you could see grown is 5,000 miles away. If you want to see another tea garden, you're going to have to get an early start. This is the Charleston Tea Plantation owned by the Bigelow family, world famous, legendary tea makers. Believe it or not, these are actual descendants of tea that was brought over in the 1700s from China. From China. Yes. So these were all um, propagated from those original plants? They are. Some of them are the original plants. Lori Bigelow them. tells us that actually the plantation is legendary too. This is tea. The Camellia sinensis bush, this is what gives us tea. And standing in the middle of their legendary tea fields. This is the real thing. Lori's parents, the Bigelows, David and Eunice. Yes, the very people whose signatures approve every Bigelow tea bag in your pantry or cupboard. How all of this got started is a bit hard to believe. In 1945, David Bigelow's mom prepared a batch of her homemade orange spice tea, gave it to a friend to serve at a dinner party, and after the party, Grandma Bigelow asked? What happened? Did the people like it? What did they say? And so she said, well, to my mother-in-law, they all had nothing but constant comments about it, and that's how it got its name. And yes, that is how arguably one of the most famous teas on earth got its name, Constant Comment. Strange, but true. So she started making this tea in her kitchen, and my father used to hand paint the cans, and my grandfather did, and my grandfather whispered over one night, don't tell your mother, but this tea is never gonna make it. <laughs> and thankfully, no one listened to grandpa. You are actually the tea taster. Mm -hmm. You decide when it's right. Yeah, actually I'm third generation tea taster in my family. Bill Hall's father, and his grandfather were tea tasters. To be a tea taster, you have to go through a four-year apprenticeship in England where you taste between 800 and 1,000 cups of tea every day, five days a week for four years. Stop it. I swear to God. Naturally, I whipped out my cell phone calculator and did some math. There's something wrong with you. And get this, in four years, Bill tested three quarters of a million cups of tea. Have you considered washing these? Out between usings? <laughs> no, on. no, no, you're not supposed to. Oh, oh, that's part of the charm. Or no, part of the no, tape. You, you can't you can't contaminate the tea with anything, so it's just washed in water. No soap. So there's never been soap on this. No. Bill is one of the last of a dying breed in many ways, but <laughs> <laughs> he truly is one of the last professionally trained tea tasters. So here we have the convergence of one of the greatest American tea families. To us, this is a big thrill at, at, at the end of our tea career, if you will. The oldest and last standing tea garden in North America. Smell that. That smells great. Hmm. And a rare third generation tea taster. It's intoxicating. Yeah. You know, it's got a heavy, thick, perfumey, almost like a perfume flavor. Wow. Who actually does as much sniffing as tasting. Tea tasting is much more complicated and much more difficult than wine tasting or coffee tasting. Bill Hall, like some mad scientist, oversees every single detail. From the tea fields themselves, to the harvesting, to the leaf processing. I can't even see that thing moving. Right. But you're telling me from one end to the other, six hours? And here's the best news of all. We're the only, I think, one of the few tea estates in the world where the public is welcome. We want you to come, we want you to come and see. Bill Hall and the Bigelows now invite you to come watch them make this country's only tea American classic. And this is what makes black tea what black tea is. Learn how they take raw tea leaves and patiently transform it into their famous drinkable tea. The leaf comes from the field with 80% moisture. 80%. During this withering stage, we're reducing that moisture from 80% down to 68 percent and that goes on for 18 hours oh yeah <laughs> bill is part american mad scientist and you have to use fresh cold water never hot water from the hot water tap because 
Cold water has more oxygen in it. And part snobby British tea taster. It's a lot like if you took a bite of an apple and left it on the counter, that apple begins to change color. Right. The same thing's happening with the tea leaves. Like his tea, Bill Hall is the perfect blend for this mission. This is where the oxidation takes place. Saving the last tea plantation in North America. And there's some 200,000 tea bushes out here on this farm, on this plantation. And it's become more than a business for the Bigelows too. And it was first just for tea and for tea lovers and the tea industry and the world. But then it really became for um, history. For so it started with a small dream of saving it just, for the world. Just, well, with a small dream. <laughs> <laughs> and then it became yeah, history. Yeah. <laughs> From painting tea cans as a youngster for his mother to swinging the doors wide open for a world of tea lovers to come see, David Bigelow and his wife Eunice, well, they're on one last mission too. As long as we're alive, this isn't going anywhere. This is it. I mean, we're going to keep this. This is a treasure. It's an absolute treasure.